One single injection unlocks your DNA and will release another version of yourself. Hey everybody, the clip is from the latest Demi Moore film, The Substance, which goes to unbelievable extremes to depict what happens when we put such a high value on age and beauty. It's about more than that though, but it hits home because fitness, body image, and youth culture dominate our lives. It's a story about a fitness instructor who gets into black market drugs to create a younger, more fit and better version of herself. My name is Andy. And I'm Janita. In today's show, if you want to learn the secrets of the people and the countries where they live longer, healthier, and happier lives, this show is for you. I went to the theater to see The Substance, starring Demi Moore. She is now in her 60s. She's been involved in many disruptive films and events, and this film is another. Have you ever dreamt of a better version of yourself? Younger, more beautiful, more perfect. You know, I can't relate because all of my friends and I are getting older and sometimes I see this obsession about, you know, being like having no wrinkles, about losing the weight. And I'm, at least with for women, our body start changes after, you know, 45, 50, when we get to menopause. So I thought it was very interesting. That a, a generational movie, one of those things I don't think you like. Again. So anyway, today's show will explore regions on Earth where people live long. Hi, I'm Nora O'Donnell and this is Person to Person. Our guest today is an expert on living longer, Dan Butner. If you ask the average American what the optimal formula of longevity is, they probably couldn't tell you. Dan Butner is an author, explorer, and is best known for his work on the Blue Zones. So it's Saturday night in the Blue Zone in Icaria. Butner travels all over the globe in search of the places where people consistently live longer. You know, you know Andy, that I went to Miami in March and I saw Dan Butner and I have read his book and I... I, I don't know if you had the chance to see uh, Living to 100, which is a, a series on Netflix, but it's about the Blue Zones, and he, he made those. And I thought it was unbelievable. I loved it, all the energy and all of the things that they do there. And for you who are watching us, Blue Zones are five different places in the world or areas in the world where people have been observed to live longer. And something that I love to say, and I think I got it from Dan Budner, but he always said that it's not about adding years to your life, is that it's about adding lives to your years. So the people in the blue zones tend to live longer and suffer from fewer chronic diseases associated with getting older, just like heart diseases, diabetes, cancer, and even Alzheimer. And basically, it's it's um, due to like what we know: healthy diet, exercise, a strong social connections, having a purpose. So, what do you think about the blue zones? Have you ever been to one? Yes, I've probably been to Loma Linda, California, is where I've probably been. But I too find it very interesting. What I um, what I, what what strikes me about it is that uh, he's come up with a fantastic concept and a very very good marketing concept. And the point of it all, you know, you can strip away the whole blue zone idea and keep in mind that the thing that's going on in the, in the countries and areas and the blue zones that he talks about are people who are living life right. In other words, they're living, they're, they're living a healthy life. They're eating better, they're sleeping better, they're exercising better. And, uh, and I, where I take a, a difference, a different approach or a, a little bit different outlook is there's nothing magical about living in a blue zone. The point of it all is to live like you live in a blue zone. And those are the critical points that I think we can all learn from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I don't know if we, like, 
let, let's talk about first, let's talk about nutrition and the people in the blue zone, about 70% or 80% of their diet, it's uh, plant-based. So what does that mean? That they eat a lot of vegetables, legumes, greens, fruits, and all of that. And maybe some seeds and fats like avocado, olive oil. Those, those are great. But most of that is um, plant-based. And then the other between 30 and 20 percent is high quality protein so it's not protein any protein right any any animal protein is that they're having high quality protein like you know not farm raised but maybe wild caught maybe cage free pasture raised non-antibiotics and that's very important nutrition is an essential part to have energy remember that every time that we eat our food is information for our cells for our organs for everything in our body so the more nutrient dense the food that we eat the better it's going to be for us to thrive to have energy remember that nutrients they go to the cells and they feed the cells especially the my mitochondria and the mitochondria produces energy and energy for what to be here talking to you to stand up to go out to go to the supermarket to play with the grandkids so i'm really i'm I'm, I'm a person who really eats well and something and i don't know about you andy but something that has worked for me like if you if you come to my house my house is free of chocolate chips or anything that has lots of sugar or processed food so i don't have to make the decision when i'm when i'm home so that's something that has really worked for me then um i don't know about you but i go to the local farmers market to eat the best that i can eat so that something has worked for me in my home and i tend to cook a lot in my house i do meal prep so what about you i eat a pretty steady mediterranean diet now mm -hmm. my my wife is uh uh, a Mediterranean cook, she's an outstanding cook, she's in the restaurant business, and uh, I learned to really believe that the Mediterranean diet adheres and uh, it carries a lot of what we're talking about in terms of a uh, healthy diet. Is that what you've discovered? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you know, the, the when you're talking about the mediterranean diet there is a diet that is called the mind diet which is a combination of the mediterranean diet and the dash that is recommended for a very good heart so i think you're right on point i guess you eat lots of fish and maybe vegetables and olive oil and that's very good for your health so when we were talking about food and the we have to we have to think about two things. One, it's micronutrients, which are which are the proteins, the carbohydrates, and the fats, and then the micronutrients, all the minerals and the vitamins that they're inside the proteins and the carbohydrates and the fats. So for us, as we age, older adult, everybody's different. But if we have a diet around like forty percent carbohydrates. 30% fats and 30% proteins that should be good for us, but everybody's different. So something that might be good for you, Andy, might not be so good for me. So when we eat proteins, proteins, they become amino acids in the body. So uh, when we start eating, it, the body starts breaking down the food and the proteins become amino acids. Those amino acids go together with other amino acids and they become new proteins in your body. According to research, sometimes older adults cannot synthesize, and I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Synthesize that, sounded right to me. It's okay, it sounded right, that's perfect. So sometimes um, our body doesn't synthesize the proteins the same way as we're younger, and that happens. So we need to have very good quality, high quality proteins in our life when we're eating chicken or fish or whatever it is that we're eating. 
make make your best when you go to the supermarket and buy this and read the labels so that's something good proteins in the body are crucial for almost everything that is going on inside us right for like every every function repair uh maintenance so if we want to have um muscles right we need the muscles because when we're 30 we start losing muscle mass so we need to really concentrate in having muscles to protect our bones and also to protect our organs that that is so important and uh something that i have really become very attuned to doing and uh it's uh something that's actually fairly recent for me and i'm finding how much i learn by doing this mm -hmm. and that is reading the labels because mm -hmm. it's so helpful to know what you're eating and really uh, what's in there and you might and i was surprised to find out there are things in there that are lower down in the list of what's on the, in the ingredients that you are kind of surprised or maybe you don't even know what they are and mm -hmm. uh, so by reading the labels uh, i learn a lot that's that's awesome that you mention it why because i have this rule well several rules so one no more than five ingredients all right so the people who produce the food that we eat they have to start with the ingredient that the the produce have the more amount of so if you are starting to read the ingredient and it says sugar it has more sugars than anything else so don't eat it no more than five ingredients then if you cannot pronounce it most likely your body is not going to be able to you know actually absorb that because it's chemical so if you cannot pronounce it don't do it it's good that i don't speak english that well because i cannot pronounce anything so i don't eat any of it <laughs> <Got it, yeah. laughs> that's a good point that's and, a good point <laughs> yeah no, that, that was a lesson that I found really invaluable and I continue doing it and I enjoy it actually. I've come to enjoy reading labels on food because uh, now I it's easier for me to decide what's right. And the other thing is I can look more closely at the calories and the calories per serving. That, that really tells me an awful mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. So that's been really helpful. Um, you know, something all else that uh, we've learned uh, that i learned from studying the blue zones uh and you look at each one of the regions uh, the countries and areas that he talks about uh the five blue zones is uh, it's where we're at right uh that um the uh the, the need and the importance of sleep is so important and and until uh, i got much older in life i didn't really realize the importance and the value of sleep but we're hearing that more and more, how important it is to try to get a decent night's sleep and sleep well. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Oh, of course. I mean, you know, how do you feel if you didn't sleep well? You feel cranky, you don't have energy. Of course, that's essential. There's several things that happen when we sleep. So we release the toxins in our body, um, the hippocampus work, the memory works. So we, as older adults, we need to sleep definitely um hormone regulation as well and you know if we want to build muscle we build muscle at night it, that's the funny part you go to the gym or you take the weights during the day but you build the muscle at night when you sleep so it is so important i love I read a book by Ariana Huffington from the Huffington Post um, and she has this amazing book that is called Thrive and she talks about four different measures of you know like to thrive in your life and inside she quotes Bill Clinton our, our ex-president right and he said something like this every decision every bad decision that I've made in my life I made it because I was tired and I was like I I just and it's about sleep 
he when he was pressing he's like oh i just need four hours of sleep every research says that we need between seven and nine hours of sleep so every time i talk to my mom my mom she's 83 my dad is 90 and every time i, I talk to her my, i'm like mom how is my dad oh he's sleeping so he sleeps like at 11 a.m and then at 2 p.m after you know and then at 9 30 p.m and i'm like mom you're just jealous <laughs> because he sleeps <laughs> well, that's a good lesson to learn uh, there are so many little lessons that i really got out of uh the blue zones that uh they well they're not so obvious but one of them um, uh, has to do with uh, uh, your neighbors and your mm -hmm. your uh, friendships and your your number of friends in your life. Now, each one of the countries that he and the regions that he talks about, they break it out. I've noticed into what is particularly strong about that particular region, and you know some of the regions talk about that that mm -hmm. the, uh, the the community that they live in is so vital. And that's something that we can all learn from. It's the importance of friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, I think this is like we, we were born to be with people around us. So we need this. There is one study and I, it, it, it's just amazing when, when women are surrounded by other women and um, children they release oxytocin. Oxytocin is a chemical in your body that makes you feel good and relaxed. So if you want to be relaxed, go and find some girlfriends and that's going to help. And you know how it feels. I think it was Did James. Did you say girlfriends? Paul. Girlfriends, yes. Is that for me? No, for you, no, because you're married. <laughs> so you're talking to your, uh, who are you talking to in this regard? No, 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 but you you need to be surrounded by people. Uh -huh. And there is another study that says that men and women, when they're isolated, they're more likely to have depression and anxiety. So in the blue zones, these people are amazing because they were like a community. I don't know if you saw, I, I think maybe it was Italy, one of the episodes of Living to 100, the series uh -huh. in Netflix from Dan Butner there was this woman old woman i don't know in her 90s um but she couldn't do a lot so all of her friends they would come cook for her be surrounded by her they would play games and everything so when you when if you want to like it, this is a must if you want to live longer but healthier and happier because i don't want to live longer in a bed you know like mm -hmm. almost dying right. i want to live longer standing up just like i'm doing right here uh with my tennis shoes all the time working and doing everything but you need to have a strong social network and connections and that's going to provide support mentally emotionally and sometimes even physically and i I've seen, like for me, for example, exercise, it comes very easy for me. I exercise every day. I don't need anybody. But I see it on my friends that I have, I have some friends and they go and walk four times a week. And they do it because they're together. Because if they wouldn't be together, they wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. So I love to see that you support each other, you I mean, you have an accountability partner and it makes you make better decisions, right? I love that advice. That is uh, really The powerful. girlfriend advice or what advice? <laughs> <laughs> the friend, no, you know, the idea of uh, getting some people together on a regular basis and to take a walk or whatever the case may be, and walking is one example, and uh, you have a support group and you're getting mm -hmm. out there and uh, doing what's good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's helpful. And the I other do. thing that I really learned from this, uh, and again, I, I, you know, I think we all in many ways know the truth, know what's really good for us. But the other thing that I learned from this 
is the fact that we as humans are sort of uh, uh, programmed in a way to be doing something in our lives and it sort of kind of clashes with retirement because retirement means mm -hmm. that we sort of rest and don't do stuff. And the, the point of the, what I learned about Blue Zones is some of these regions, people continue to, to work or to do something on a regular basis that uh, is constructive, uh, that they feel uh, is good, good about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know that last year I did a program with Dr. Daniel Amen. I, I don't know if you've heard about it or if you if you're watching us, but well, Dr. Daniel, well, Dr. Daniel Amen, he has been taking picture of the brain for thirty something years, so a long time. Mm -hmm. So he he put together a list of 11 things that can affect your brain and now that you're talking about retirement one of the things that can actually affect your brain either in a positive way or a negative way is retirement is you know oh i don't work anymore and that's it i don't do anything and as i see my 90 year old dad his brain is better than mine and my sister and my siblings and everybody he's so sharp and one of the reasons i think he i i don't know maybe like 30 years ago he retired but he never stopped learning so that's one of the things like it's so important he's all the time reading books um watching videos he's all the time like sending us things to do and one of the things that you said as well is maybe you know you retire but in the blue zones they have this sense of purpose so when they do work maybe it's not work maybe it's volunteering you know maybe it's helping your neighbor who's older so you cook for her you read for her so you have a sense of purpose and i think sometimes andy Maybe in the era that we live, and I, I don't know, you know, it, it, like if you have kids, usually they're far away, the grandkids are far away, so you live by yourself. And when you're surrounded, I, I think it was last year, I was watching um, a conference and Maria Shriver was there and she was inter interviewing a lot of people from longevity. And one of the I don't remember his name, but one man said that when we live with our parents, I mean, when, when the parents live with you and your kids and grandkids, you add eight years to their life. Can you believe that? That's fantastic. It is. Yeah. Uh, if people want to get more information on the Blue Zones, I know there's a lot out there. Uh, you mentioned that Netflix has a, a series, so if, uh, if you subscribe to Net Netflix, that might be a good place to start, wouldn't you think? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. You know, there th there's so much studies that they're doing right now to research for longevity right so if you follow people like mark hyman he's huge in longevity david sinclair um even tony robbins he wrote a book called life force and he talks about you know all the things that people are doing to increase our quality increase years and life to our years as well so those might be options that you can see but if you want to know more about the blue zones dan budner is the one who came up with the concept well really this has been fantastic i really appreciate it it's great having you here awesome it's great to talk about everything that is related to wellness i'm passionate about it and i i i I do believe we forgot one, it's very important Good. that people what in the that? blue zones uh -huh. are very active and they exercise all the time. And it doesn't have to be that, you know, like they're actually getting some weights and doing, but they're, maybe they have a garden, maybe they have um, uh, chips, whatever it is, they're doing something all the time. And it's funny because if you see this 
areas which we mentioned there were five but we didn't mention where but um in japan costa rica italy greece in the United States, in California. So there are five in total. But some of them, if you see like Italy or Sardinia or I don't remember Greece, but they're like the streets are like this, you know, so they have to walk up, they have to walk down. So they're all the time walking everywhere. They're very active. And in the series that I talk about with Dan Budner, he, one of the guys, he was like 90 something and he was riding a horse. Like I would be afraid to ride a horse. I don't know. You know, we're, I don't want to fall, but I love that. And then in Ik Ikinawa, Okinawa in Japan, they usually meet the people. So if we're in Okinawa, if you come and visit me in my house, we're not going to sit in the couch. We're going to sit on the floor. So imagine every time you sit on the floor and you go call, come up and you go down and you come up, all the muscles that you're working, the quads, the glutes, everything. So, you know, that's something that I thought it was very interesting. Yeah, I agree. Well, look at it. If you, uh, if you enjoyed and you learned something from this episode, subscribe and hit that reminder bell. There are new shows every week. You will not only create a habit of learning how to be happier, healthier, and more healed, but you'll also support us in making better, bigger, and brighter content. Your subscription would mean the absolute world to us. You can contact us on social media and through our websites. Subscribe right now. If you love this episode, you will enjoy my conversation with Jennifer Sokolo on how to claim your swagger to transform yourself and your life. That's the most, one of the most amazing discoveries that's happened in psychological research in the past two decades. Recognizing and identifying the fact that we can choose how we think.